It's great to share this opportunity with my colleagues from FLAC, Robin, Steph and Diane. And together, we hope to give you a little insight into why FLAC is more than the magazine that you'll be finding in your goodie bags. So I've had many labels in my life. I've trained as a nurse, I've been a mother, single mother, studied fine art, 20 years of freelance self-employment in the esoteric world of contemporary art, teaching in higher education. And possibly today, I may become a grandmother. <laughs> but I've never been homeless. I've never been a homeless person. And somebody's just popped into all of your heads, a homeless person. And I'm pretty sure it's not somebody like Jade, member of FLAC, exuberant wordsmith, and in full recovery now from many years of vulnerable housing and crack cocaine addiction. Probably the person you imagined was somebody more like Tony, who sadly took his life last summer after many years of homelessness and alcoholism in um, following... He was in the army, he was a paratrooper, he served in Northern Ireland. In 2006, I took over the role of editor of The Willow Walker, a quarterly magazine publishing the work of homeless people in Cambridge. And I have to be honest, at the time, I thought I'd be making the best of dodgy doggerel, tarting up casual doodles in Photoshop and editing sob stories. Quite to the contrary. I found myself creatively inspired and intellectually challenged by artists, writers, poets and musicians. I worked on articles by people with passion and expertise in subjects as diverse as chess, astronomy and wild food. People who relished and flourished given the opportunity to share their experiences and make their voices heard. I also began to understand that the trauma that leads to someone becoming homeless is just the beginning of the problem of homelessness. This is an extract from an article by Julian Raphael who writes regularly for FLAC. When I became homeless, I lost... Oh, I'm shaking like a leaf. When I became homeless, I lost all social currency. By currency, I mean pretty much exactly what is meant by, social currency, by monetary currency. Once homeless and on the streets, I became a pre-decimalisation penny in the world of £50 notes. My most shocking moments of realising I had lost social currency came when speaking with people who I felt were friends. I would be saying this and that and blah de blah perhaps trying to be funny, perhaps soliciting for serious advice or a favour. Nada. Nothing. They were seeing me as a tramp and they could not be friends with the tramp. I was a drain. I was money going down the drain. I was a failure and failure might be contagious. The homeless have entered the black hole in society's map of the known universe they have plunged off the straight, foaming edge of the world and disappeared. The homeless are one of life's big mysteries. Within three weeks of becoming homeless, the negative stereotype of the homeless becomes your identity. Everywhere you go, from housing office to night shelter, to day centre to hostel, you are defined by the problem of your homelessness. Everyone you meet is either homeless themselves <clears throat> or a professional focusing on the problem of your homelessness. Outside of your homeless label, you cease to exist. In a small way, the Willow Walker began to offer people the opportunity to be creative, to be heard, to be engaged, and to have something else to think about. And I saw people grow in confidence and start to believe in a life beyond their homelessness. In 2009, the Willow Walker lost its funding, and I was made redundant. At that time, this was utterly devastating for both myself and the people I'd been working with. But with their extraordinary support and involvement at every messy, bureaucratic, frustrating stage of what it takes to turn a vision into a sustainable business and charity, in just under two years, the Willow Walker transformed into FLAC, we launched to the public last year, publishing a monthly listings magazine for Cambridge, which includes a vibrant mix of articles, reviews, contentious rants, recipes and fiendish puzzles, all contributed by our homeless members. We're often asked about the name FLAC. It was suggested by a homeless artist and playwright who spotted its double meanings potential to play into our core mission. Homeless people get a lot of flack a.k.a. random, undirected, and largely undeserved criticism. And the verb to flack, look it up in the dictionary, means to publicise and promote. 
And that's what FLAC's core mission is. We set out to publicise and promote a positive view of who homeless people are and what they have to offer. Homelessness is destructive. FLAC is creative. FLAC is not just me. It's now a vibrant team of over 50 homeless people and volunteers from all walks of life. And I'm hugely privileged to work with them all. So it's time for me to shut up and let them speak for themselves. I'd like to introduce you first to Robin, who has been involved in FLAC since the very beginning. And among his many talents, he's a superb cook who takes genuine pleasure in preparing and serving delicious food. Thank you. Thank you, Kirsten. Most people's perception of a homeless person is someone with limited education, abusive background, and rough upbringing, and so on. I'll confess, even myself, used to drive past the night shelter in Cambridge, looking at the queue of homeless people, and used to think that I'll never be like that, that will never happen to me. I had a great childhood. So born in Bangladesh, I came to this country at the age of 16 to get higher education. And yes, I did manage to get a law degree and had a very good career with Norwich Union. A fiancé, a mortgage with three-bedroom house, and a sports car, and life was very sweet. Four years ago, followed by a bad breakup, I had a breakdown. I became very depressed, started drinking heavily, and used recreational drugs. I lost my driving license, shamefully for driving under the influence, and soon, which resulted in loss of my job. And within a year, I lost my house and ended up on the streets. Being on the streets with the wrong crowd, I started using heroin and soon started shoplifting to fund my habit. My crime, crime spree, however, only lasted four months because I was not good at it. <laughs> Even the judge said that I should choose a different career <laughs> because he never seen so, uh, a person turn up in the court in such a space of time. Bouncing from night shelter to hostels and struggling with the addiction, I got involved with FLAG from the beginning, as Kirsten said, which played an integral part on, in my recovery. I published several poems and articles in FLAG and made a few short films by collaborating with, collaborating with FLAG. It gave me routine, much needed confidence and self-esteem. The slide up there is from one of my short films called Funny How, which is on YouTube and as well as FLAG website. I am currently clean, have my own place, and working on my recovery. I still have good days and bad days like everyone else, and I'm taking day at a time, and just trying to be a better person. Thank you, and I'm gonna pass it to Steph, who is a brilliant fantasy writer. Thank you. Hi, <laughs> thanks Robin. Uh, this is my friend Cindy at the FLAC photo shoot. She and I have several things in common, the first being that FLAC was, gave us somewhere to be ourselves when we needed it most. Each of us had hit a low when we first came to FLAC. Our situations had leached our confidence and we were feeling all but useless, nobodies at the bottom of a dark well. There seemed no reason even to look for the light at the top. There was no way out anyway. There were plenty of people who would help you be more comfortable, let you know you're not alone, uh, show you the odd slippery handhold. What we needed was a ladder. Flack was our ladder, but we had to climb it ourselves. With the encouragement of their easy acceptance of us, faults and all, we climbed. We have both had a hand somewhere in every issue of Flack since our pictures and Cindy's story uh, appeared in the launch issue last October. Even if it was just with production and editing, we helped. And now, here I am, speaking to all of you. <laughs> it's terrifying. <laughs> um, and Cindy is now being paid for doing just what she wants to, working at FLAC, helping people who are now where we were then. In her words, from this month's FLAC magazine, that's in all your goodie bags, <laughs> the transformation from chaos to stability is 100% the FLAC effect. And now I'd like to pass you to our facilitator, Diane, whose collection of zombie teddies I would dearly love to own. <laughs> well 
This is Jessica, who's a recent graduate from Cambridge University. Um, and Nick Spencer, or Wolfie, who is um, still without secure accommodation, who has significant issues with drugs, alcohol, who's frequently suicidal, and has only one leg and has to be wheeled around in a wheelchair. Um, Wolfie's story is a very sad one. Once Wolf, but um, we're not about his problems. Um, once Wolfie came into flat at a really awkward time, and he was suicidal and needing attention. And I had to turn him away um, because we had to, because I had to go, and um, we're not, we can't give all the support that we want to all the time. But before I did, I gave him, I did some googling, I gave him some paper, I gave gave him some um, uh, paper with a chessboard on it, and printed out some pictures of chess pieces. Um, he said I might not see him again, and I said nonsense because we're going to have your um, chess puzzle in the next issue of Flack. Um, and he, say, he, he came back and he's had his, pu his puzzle published. You can see it in the is issue of the magazine that's in your goodie bag. And he came back and he came back again. He knows we care, but we help to take him away from his problems for the time that he's with us. So he's with Jessica playing chess at Charities Fair and talking about Flack. So at Flack, service user involvement isn't just a token or thing, it's a real thing. Um, the ethos of FLAC is something that's been developed collectively, literally from the grassroots or the pavement. When we say we focus on potential rather than problems, um, we mean we use the opportunity of our coming together to create something of value to the human community as a whole. We're channeling people's energy rather than wasting it, and by doing that we're returning social value, which is reflected in the outcomes that we're giving. FLAC is a family, a big extended family, with people sharing the same house and people coming and going, make, making a creative mess and then cleaning up again. There's a continuous di dialectic between organisation and chaos, and FLAC as it is now represents a synthesis of that dialectic. It's a community where skills are shared formally and informally, where staff and volunteers learn as much from the clients as they do from us, and now three of our six staff are ex-homeless people. Out of the creative mess, we create something of genuine and long-term value. The magazine and the films that we've made are of aesthetic worth. It's not just because they're feel-good value, because they've got you know, homeless people behind them. They're really of good quality. And that's reflected in our booming magazine sales and the fact that we've got commissions now to make um, films for Citizens Advice Bureau and for the Cambridge Science Festival. So to end, um, we're going to show a film which I was involved in making um, when I was a volunteer. Um, and it's made by Toby Peters, who is um, an alcoholic in recovery who was homeless for many years on the streets, um, who's now, like me, um, being paid full-time for his empathy and his excellent creative skills. So um, I hope you've managed to learn a little bit about Flack and enjoy the film. Well, I've been volunteering with FLAC for about six or seven months and I'm training for a marathon to raise money to keep us going. Um, I think the most unique thing that FLAC has to offer is this trust and responsibility. So many projects aimed at people with addiction issues, mental health issues, unemployment, chaotic lifestyles and homelessness, they actually work on the lack of trust that people have in themselves. They reinforce the feeling that people's lives are out of control and that the chaos they're going through is their fate. You walk into an average institution and the message you get from the way that people act and speak towards you is that you need some kind of patronising containment, some cocoon around you to protect you from yourself. The negative labels that we let get attached to ourselves when we go through something traumatic, like a mental breakdown that ends in us losing a job or a relationship or the loss of someone close, or even just the experience of living, trying to be a human being, those labels end up sticking, keeping us in the past, trying to unlock the enigma of what went wrong. And they lead us eventually to conclude that it's something about us that's fundamentally bad. Being labelled, being diagnosed with an illness, or being labelled as an addict, or as a tramp, or as a street drinker, that reinforces that conclusion. The flack 
actively works against labelling and the marginalisation of people with these kinds of issues. Because everyone that walks through the door becomes part of what's going on. Everyone is handed a sort of fresh slate to start from, creatively. It's not a case of being given more leeway or freedom as you prove that you can be trusted. Flat comes from the starting point of trust. Obviously there's boundaries about what's acceptable behaviour, but it's common sense and people are treated as adults who can tune into that for themselves. There's no suspiciousness or judgement of people and there's no need to back up your problem behaviours with some kind of excuse because the negative stuff's not really relevant as long as you're engaging with what you're doing at FLAC. It's not sensationalised because no one's treating you with these kind of kid gloves as though you're special because of your problems. You're special because of what you can do, like write a poem or a play, make a film, tell a joke, make, make matchstick models or fix bikes, make people laugh, cheer people up, make a really good cup of tea. And people are free to engage at whatever level they'd like, from using an opportunity to meet friends in a way that the place that's away from the negative focus that pervades the hostels, using a chance to improve their computer and literacy skills, contributing some artwork or poetry, contributing their opinions, or starting to take the initiative and come up with new projects and articles and ideas. There's this openness to the atmosphere of flat that lets people breathe and becomes themselves a bit more. It's like a tree that becomes more alive as each one of its branches reaches out into the air and blossoms with these creative ideas. Even though there's no pressure on people to change, everyone who's been involved so far, from staff to volunteers to service users, has become more confident, they've become more themselves and happier with who they are, or at least more aware of who they are and what they want from life. Several people have stopped taking Class A drugs, several have gotten jobs, people have learned loads of new skills, people have become a lot more assertive and are embracing their lives a lot more. I think everyone has moved towards accepting themselves as they are rather than beating themselves up with what they aren't or what they haven't done. Flack actually gives you the ownership of something. And if you have an idea, the response from others is not yes or no, but tell me more, how can we make that a reality? Like, how would that work? And I think that's really refreshing. There's really nothing like it. Coffee, yeah? Tea, please. Diane? Yeah? You like a drink? No, thanks. Nick? Yeah? yeah. Tea? No, I'm fine, thanks, mate. Yeah.